What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Uh, not too long ago, I recently put out a video as a part of a new playlist I'm running called Amazing Plays, in which I, you know, look at tape, analyze, break down plays that stand out to me. Or ones that people suggest I'll take a look at it and break it down via my perspective to the best of my ability. All right, recently I put out a one uh, about the infamous Game 5 of the 1987 Eastern Conference Finals in which Isaiah Thomas lobbed the ball to Bill Lambert, Larry Bird steals it, uh, maintains his balance, passes to DJ, DJ hits the shot, one second left, the Boston Celtics win the game and eventually end up winning that series in seven. Now, during my analysis, I was like, oh, you know, I'm not sure what some of these people were thinking, but this is what they were probably thinking. But big shout out to subscriber, follower, um, Creontis, hope I'm saying your name right, but provided me information or provided me videos of Larry Bird's breakdown of that scenario and a video of Isaiah Thomas's breakdown and analysis of that scenario. So I'm going to combine both those videos into one. For this one and we'll take a look at Larry Bird's perspective and we'll take a look at Isaiah Thomas's perspective and what they were thinking and how they viewed everything also I will put a link to the to the video of me breaking that play down in the description of this video and you can find everything together nice jam-packed and easy so you can see my perspective and their perspective if you wish all right let's first check out what Isaiah Thomas had to say and then we'll check out what Larry Bird had to say Appreciate you, Creontes. Appreciate that. This was a this was a dope, dope find, and thank you for getting it to me. Let's get into it. Now, the Boston moment that was that was a heartbreaking moment. Probably, what was heartbreaking about that moment is before I threw the ball away, I had made the game win shot. Out on the top of the floor against Houston. Sixteen seconds. You know, Bird's gonna get it either on the left side or the right side. He has felt. You've got to get all over the inbound, man. Don't give him a clear place to look to make the pass. And we got the play figured out. We sent him left. About five of us come over there to try to block the shot. There's Bird with the ball against Mahomes. He'll take it to the hoop. He can bet. He's trying to draw a foul. It's blocked. And Seasting hit it off of a Detroit player. No, no. I'll never forget everything just started. It went in slow motion. <laughs> Jess Kersey is standing there. I'm looking at him, and we froze, we celebrating, and Jess Kersey starts to count. All right, pause. Now, like I said, you can go check out my video to see what I had to say, but just when, when I was breaking this down, I was like, I don't know what Isaiah Thomas was thinking. I assume he was just completely tunnel vision, and I thought he was looking straight at Lambert because Lambert was open, DJ was sacking off, and wasn't even paying attention to the placement and the defense set up by the other players, what Larry Bird was thinking. Uh, the possibility of Larry Bird breaching that ground and intercepting. So I knew he had tunnel vision. I thought he was tunnel vision at Lambert, but he, at some point here, he was looking at the ref. To Detroit, Bird steals it. Johnson. This is probably one of the most incredible plays probably I've ever witnessed from an athletic standpoint. Two people being in sync and just Bird just playing every second. And that's what the Celtics taught us. Not to play 47 and a half minutes, mm -hmm. but to play a full 48. But the thing I remember the most, that joker caught the ball, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, he going out of bounds. Out of bounds. That dude did this, like a ballerina, right? And if you go back and you watch the play, that dude is on his toes. The baseline the, the... is right up under his toes. And in my mind, he must have stood there for about five seconds because every, <laughs> everything was going in slow motion in my mind, right? And then, and then it was, it's, it's, it's a strange moment. I'm like, damn, how are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and then DJ, out of nowhere, they are so in tune. They are so in sync. You know, Bird hits him, he catches the basketball, lay it up. And as I'm walking to the huddle, this is what I see. I'm walking to the huddle. I see DJ do this. Unbelievable. Now this balcony is 
I mean, it wasn't no, it wasn't no high five. It wasn't no, it wasn't Isaiah dance. It, it was, it was like it was a love thing, you know. Like they, they, they hugged and embraced. And as I come back out of the huddle, right, we, we, we get, we try to take the ball out of bounds or whatever. Larry walks by and he goes, <laughs> "Wow!" Winks at me, right? I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, had we not come back and won. I, that that would crush me, right? These these at, but you know, it was a learning experience. So, you know that that play. You know, let me tell you how I got over that play. After so after throwing the ball away, right? You know, we we got a chance to go to NBA Finals. Now this balcony is rocking and swaying right now. It's supposed to be made of steel. What a play by Larry Bird. So now we go in the locker room, and you know the locker room. Y'all, y'all had y'all y'all only had two showers that worked for us, and the locker room was about this big. <laughs> now I'm sitting right next to the shower, right, and so everybody and I don't, I don't want to get in. I don't want to go in because I know I'm get my ass beat up in there. <laughs> you know? So I'm I'm waiting. You know I'm trying to be last to be in the shower by myself. So Max, everybody who walks by me. I mean, everybody who walks by me, this is what you hear. Damn. And they walk into the shower, right? <laughs> I, I don't get no pat on the back. It's going to be all right. Everybody walk by. And they, <clears throat> then they go here, right? And then it's like a single foul line, right? I stand there like Lamb, Lamb was brutal. I mean, brutal. So he walks by and he's like, I just can't fucking believe you. <laughs> so so now now we get on the bus now i'm I'm crushed i'm really crushed now we get on the bus we get on the plane and john sally is the first one who taps you on the shoulder to say hey man it, it's gonna be all right and now i'm so pissed i i'm taking it out on him what you mean man what you <laughs> <laughs> but how i got over it i didn't go to practice the next day I was so crushed because remember, I, I'm the I'm the most trusted guy on the team. I'm the dependable one, right? Mm -hmm. And now this is the biggest moment of my career. Everybody, else, and I fail. I mean, flat, right? And and so I don't know how to handle this. I'm emb I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed, mm -hmm. like really embarrassed and ashamed. So I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to practice and laying in the bed and. You know, my wife comes in, the phone rings. She said, you know, you know, you got a phone call. I go, no. She goes, no, I, I, I think you should take this call. And I'm like, right. so, hey, this is Bill Russell, young man. Wow. Wow, right? Wow. Everybody fall off the horse. You need to get up and get back on the horse. It's going to be all right. Damn. Damn, right? I, I've never heard this story. The Celtic, right? Yes. Now, right. now, back in back way back when, right? My family, we were always Celtics fans. So I end up right getting out of bed, and you know, now here's the best part of this story. Game six, I walk out on the floor, and you know, as they getting ready to you know throw up the ball, right? DJ walks up to me, taps me. You all right? Oh, yeah, I'm all right. And and we win game six. Now we lose game seven, but that's how the Celtics internally treated us. That's wow. why I always feel like, you know, when whenever you hear me talk about our journey, I am always saying the Celtics, the Celtics, the Celtics, right? Because everything that that y'all were. And that y'all did, not only did y'all beat us, but y'all were also great teachers. You know, wow. we had we learned some hard lessons, but at the same time, y'all were great teachers. All right, now let's take a look at uh, what Larry Bird had to say. Down by five points in the fourth quarter, Boston was on the brink of a 3-2 series deficit. They rallied to go up by one and hope to hold on. Over to Blambeer, back to Thomas. 
Thomas bringing the ball up top. Start the drive. Goes again. Start the drive again. Stops. Pops and hits it. All right, it's 107-106, but there are 17 seconds left. And Boston will get another crack at it. The Celtics had a final chance to pull out the win, and all eyes were focused on one man. Larry Bird, basketball's undisputed miracle worker. All right, Bird is putting the ball on a play, and Dumars comes over to get right on DJ, and DJ gets the pass anyway. All right. 14 seconds left. On the left, it goes to Bird. Bird guarded nice by the horn. Drives around him. Goes on in. And the ball gets knocked out of bounds by eight. Oh, they call it the other way. And now that's a steal by Bird. Underneath the DJ. Right at one second left. What a play by Bird. Bird stole the Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> right They had game 5-1, there's no question about it. Uh, they should have won that game. And um, they forgot, you know, they forgot about Larry Bird, that's all. I tell you, Isaiah Thomas made a play, he'll, he'll remember the rest of his life. He just blew the play totally. And, uh, you know, people ask me if, uh, if I was surprised about Larry making that play. Heavens no, we, we see that play every day in practice. There's no question they thought they had the game won, and I would have thought I had the game won too. But uh... pause. That's what I was saying in my breakdown. I was like, look at this, the celebration. There is plenty of time left on the clock. You had that one dude. I don't remember which one of them. He was out there marching like he was in a band, or like a guy on in the military, just marching with the flag, going the other way, robbing and then running down. I was like, she it's too much time, baby. Um, the thing is, you know, they could have called timeout very easily and mm. advanced the ball up court. Mm. But um, the players didn't see the coach hollering and screaming. Um, Jerry System put what we call great pressure on the ball because if a guy's taking the ball out of bounds, you want to try to put some pressure on him to make him throw a lob pass or a soft pass out there. Mm -hmm. And after I got up off the floor after being knocked down, trying to you know score in the last play. Uh, I get up and I'm guarding uh, Joe Dumars and I see Lambert standing there by himself and all I did was run over there to try to foul him. And once I seen the ball being lofted up. Oh. Hmm. So initially his thought process was just get down there and foul. But after he saw the, the high arcing pass and the soft pass out to Lambert, he's like, oh, well, this is a steal. I ain't even got a, I ain't even got a foul. I mean, obviously, the it would make sense to either go for, obviously, go for the still first if you can, then quickly foul or trap situation. But as Lambert is the only person by himself, and Larry had to cover the ground, he assuming Isaiah would make a hard pass where he couldn't intercept it and he didn't, which opened the window of opportunity. Up over Sistine's head, I felt I had a chance at it. I got my hand in there and stowed it, and just as I got it, I'd seen a, a white jersey streaking down uh, towards a basket. And I turn and his DJ, of course, and he gets it and lays it in. Everything went wrong for them and everything went right for us. And, and in four seconds, hey, we're on top and we're ready to head for the world championships. One more victory to go and we couldn't be happier. We're, we're psyched. Yeah, Larry's, Larry's thought process makes sense. And it was about what I thought Larry was thinking. Um, all that makes sense. But the whole thing with Isaiah and... You know, everything going in slow motion and him looking at the ref and then the ref counting down. He's like, oh, shit, got to throw this ball in and then tunnel vision with Lambert and not really just not not all mentally there, not all the way focused. Like he like he said, they he, they there were some 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 lessons learned there and some growing pains. Um playing every second of the game, every second of the clock. What Kobe Bryant used to say, the play goes on, young buck, the play goes on. Not until that buzzer is there, that game clock is, is zeroed out, does this game end, my friend. You have to stay dialed in, laser focused through every second, and then any lapse will open up opportunities for the players that are focused on the opposite team 
to take advantage of your mental lapse. Interesting. Again, Creantis, thank you for checking out. Uh, thank you for providing these videos to me. This was cool to look at. I haven't seen these before, so uh, at least to my memory, might have I've seen a lot of a lot of this content over the last couple months. So things start bleeding together. However, again, thank you for that submission. And everybody else, if you want to check out my breakdown of that play, uh, go check out the, um, the description of this video, and I'll put a link there for it, right? Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Bird gang, what up? Celtics gang, what up? Pistons gang, what up? I'm not a big Isaiah Thomas fan, but IT fans, how you doing? Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified. Catch you on the next one. We out, baby.